Good evening viewers, uh, welcome to welcome back to the channel, uh, something a little different today. Um, so I've been on holiday for a week, but just before I went on holiday, um, I went to the fantastic show that was on for uh, the Stoke-on-Trent Stoke um, IPMS show. So they put on a great show at the, uh, at the parade ground in Stafford. Uh, so I went there with, with my model club, with Wrexham Wings, had a really good day, bought, uh, as per usual, more more new kits than I really should do to add to the stash, the ever-growing stash. Uh, but on top of that, just before we left, I uh, made a bit of an impulse buy and got myself a new airbrush. Um, so my, my airbrushing history to this point is reasonably limited I've been doing it for a couple of years um, on and off um, I've probably 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 brush painted I don't know 15 20 models now so I wouldn't say I'm an amateur anymore but I'm definitely only sort of the lower end of intermediate uh, uh, um, airbrushing my skills aren't great still um, but I do like I do like a nice airbrush I started out with some of the cheap uh, cheap Chinese ones um, Last year I moved on to, to something a little bit better. I moved on to Ardo and Steambeck. Uh, as you can see below here, these are my uh, usual tools of choice. Uh, so this is the Ardo and Steambeck Ultra. It's the uh, the lower end of the price bracket for, for the Ardo and Steambeck range. But a very, very good airbrush in itself. Just doesn't have all the bells and whistles that you get with the, uh, with the other models. And then uh, a bit randomly, I decided to skip the intermediate brush and went straight for uh, the top end of their range, which is the, uh, the Harder and Steambeck Infinity CR Plus, which is you know a very, very pretty airbrush, a uh, very nice airbrush. It's a great, great action. Very feels very good in the hand. Um, I really enjoy using it. Don't use it as often as as you might think. I tend to go for uh, the ultra more often than not because nine times out of ten the kind of things that I'm building I'm just looking for coverage rather than any any fine detail work which is why I would say that my skills are still very much at the lower end of the intermediate scale just because I, I'm still not great on the finer aspects of airbrushing um, but I, I have absolutely no complaints about hardware and steam back I, I, I really really like both of these brushes and I was not actively looking to change to anybody else uh, however so to put them to one side, when I was uh, at the Stoke show, there was a airbrush company there uh, who were selling all Badger products, and I splashed out, got myself this little beauty. This is the uh, the Badger Extreme Patriot 105. It comes with a three millimeter um, needle on it, but it is compatible with other with other sizes as well. So again comes in a nice little box hopefully you can see the brush there uh, I have I have switched out the, uh, the connector for a, uh, a quick release connector for the uh, European style air hoses uh, by default it does come with the one the, the sort of uh, the US standard connector which doesn't just doesn't fit my current uh, hose setup but it wasn't uh, this, this was a a couple of pounds extra from the airbrush chap at the show so no real no real biggie um so like i said it, there was no uh there was no pre-planning to this at all this was just an impulse purchase um had a quick chat with the guy at the show about what i'd be using it for uh it wasn't it wasn't the cheap i mean i don't know if you've ever seen the badger airbrush range but they got an awful lot of different models to choose from there's really is uh, you know I mean, the guy, the guy that was selling them at the show, I think he must have had about 15 different models. And it's not as though we're talking about like, you know, a 10 quid model and a 50 quid model and a 200 quid model and a 500 quid model. Uh, you know, these, these airbrushes, all, all 15 of these, of these models, I think range from sort of 85 to 90 pounds. And then the highest end was about 150, 150, 155. So you're not talking about a massive gulf in in the price across the entire range you had there I don't, I don't know whether they do any more expensive or cheaper versions but you know they're all those different models within that price range um it seems like they got 
got quite a bit of specificity in, in what the brushes are set up for. So I had a bit of chat with him. He seemed like a nice enough guy, very knowledgeable. And he suggested this might be about what I was looking for. So I thought, what the hell? Um, anybody that knows me will tell you. I, I'm not one really for uh, thinking long and hard about stuff that I buy. I tend to make quite a lot of impulse purchases. Sometimes it works out well, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, we'll see how it is with this one. So I'm not going to lie, my first impulse, my, my, my first impression when I got this home and had a really good look at it was, um, okay, you know, it looks it looks okay, but it it doesn't look like the premium product that you get from the Hardwood and Steenbeck range. I know that's just a visual a visual thing, maybe. You know, if you want to compare it to the Infinity, um, you know, this one just looks better, looks prettier. And I, don't, I know that doesn't mean anything. It looks looks can be deceiving, uh, and it's no guarantee of a good a good piece of equipment. But you know, there's definitely a gulf in the way that the thing appears. Um, but I reserve judgment on that. I don't really care how it looks. Or I care how how it how it sprays. So, um, so on initial thoughts on it is it, it looks functional. It's functional rather than rather than a premium sort of product and I guess I mean it isn't it isn't the most expensive one it, this was only uh, I think 80 no 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 95 I think I paid for it 95 uh, I was I was trying to choose between three or four different ones but uh, I think I paid 95 pound for it but so I, I had some initial uh, some initial things I liked about it some things I didn't like about it um, first one is the end it does come with a, uh, a protective cap, which I like on the one hand. However, it is a little bit flimsy. It's basically a piece of rubber. You know, I, I would like to have seen that made of metal to match the brush. But again, I'm talking about aesthetics here. I mean, it's perfectly it's perfectly functional for what it's intended for. My only other my only other I guess slight gripe about it is is, is that if you unscrew it the wrong way, it's tight enough. And it has a good enough grip that it takes the end of the brush off with it. <laughs> so it, it unscrews the brush so uh, no but that aside no real problem with that um, I don't like the fact that it's got this piece of plastic stuck on the bottom I don't know what that's necessary for um, not something I've seen on other airbrushes but again I, 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 maybe that's a comfort thing I think that, that might be to uh, to um, just bear with me one second so uh, I think that might be a comfort item. So I'll, I'll, I'll reserve judgment on that until I've actually used the brush. I will stress I haven't actually used this yet. I literally, I, I really genuinely haven't had a go of it. So we'll see how it how it sprays in a minute. Um, again, the the cup does come with a uh, a lid for the top of it, but again, it's you know it's cheap plastic doesn't feel the best if you were to compare it to the equivalent thing that you get with the uh, the Infinity. I will add that the Infinity is a more expensive airbrush, but again, it comes with a metal lid, so this looks a bit nicer. But this one is a, uh, still, you know, it, I, I'm optimistic at this point, get, get over this cheap plastic aspect of it and then it starts to get, get better so first thing that I strikes me is the, the trigger is very high right compared to other brushes but it does it does have a very nice action to it and I do really like the way that the um, the mechanism where the trigger uh, goes into the airbrush is is a little bit more machined than it is, is appropriate to the size of the um, the trigger mechanism itself so it, it, it feels like it fits a bit nicer whereas on on the other brushes I've got it just seems like there's a big gap in top of the airbrush which there isn't so much the case here um, but it, it has a very nice action and it definitely does, it does feel very well balanced in the hand so, um, like any airbrush of this sort of quality it has the uh, has the ability to put a a stop on it to uh, you know you can you can configure it to see how far it will let you um, how, how far you can actually uh, release the paint 
so not missing any functionality as such. One thing that uh, I, I do find I'm not, not a, a big fan of about this is, and this is probably just me, it depends how you use the brush. If you're, if you're using the airbrush with the, literally with the tip of your finger, which I, I guess you know, you, that might be how, how you're supposed to do it. Yeah, you may have a better sort of finer control if you do it that way. I'm a bit, I'm a bit fat fingered. I do like to use my finger well on the edge of the brush. So I will have my finger sort of almost on the knuckle when I when I when I airbrush and when I do that on this particular brush uh, I'm catching the color cup with my finger which like I said that that's probably more about me than it is about the brush but still it's something that I'm not a enormous fan of um, but that in itself I think we can probably get over that that's probably just me but like I said if I just compare that to the to the to the hardware and steam back that I'm more used to I do have more space between the but between the trigger and the colour cup, and it isn't isn't so much of an issue for me. Um, but I, I'm willing to concede that that's probably just me, uh, and that isn't really a design flaw per se. Um, beyond that, the one thing that this does have, it does have a small, um, it does have a small air pressure valve on the bottom of the brush, which is something that I don't have on the hard and steam back brushes, but I have seen on some of the cheaper Chinese brushes that I started out with. Um, whether I'll actually use that or not, I'm not sure. Um, it seems to have that many different ways that I can control the air pressure. I've got a obviously got a, uh, a pressure controller on my on my um, compressor on the tank. I've also got one on my air hose as well. So uh, it's it's a third different way that I can do that. I probably won't use it, but that to say that's not that's not you know. That's not to detract in any way from the fact that it is included on the brush. My, you know, my setup is not the same as everybody else's. And if you don't have another way of of uh, handily restricting the airflow, if you want to, then that is a is a really good functionality. And in terms of taking the brush apart and cleaning it, I haven't done it yet. So obviously, uh, but the the brush comes apart pretty easily. The the, the uh, the first part of the end of the nozzle comes off independently and then the whole thing uh, comes apart at the main o-ring and it it's configured very much in the same way that the uh, that the hardware and steam back brushes are where you you literally just have a a, a piece going over the needle and that fits directly into the nozzle head and then you screw it on so there's none of this uh, there's none of the you know the fiddly getting the spanner out and removing the uh, <laughs> removing the nozzle as you have to do with some of the airbrushes out there um i spent my first year doing airbrushing and i think i must have broken the nozzle on two or three different brushes just from being heavy-handed that's just me obviously that's my fault but it is you know it is not possible to do that if you don't have to do it so but so all in all, uh, I'm reasonably optimistic. If a little bit disappointed in some areas, it, it seems like it's more of a, a workmanlike tool. You know, it's not it's not going for the wow factor, it, but it just feels very nicely balanced. Um, it doesn't have the chrome finish, but then that means it hasn't got a chrome finish to lose, right? I'm not going to be complaining when that when that chrome finish gets uh, stained or comes away in parts. Um, like I said, this just feels more like a, a professional tool rather than a, I don't know, I'm going to call it a glory hound. Like the, the Infinity from Hardware and Steamback looks fantastic, right? But it's not, is it going to look that good in two or three years' time where it's got paint and a few stains on it? I don't know. So I guess uh, all there is left to do is let's give it a try. So I've just mixed up some, um, mixed up a little bit of Tamiya flat back, uh, sorry, flat black. Let me get my words out. I'm um, just going to connect this up to the air hose. Can't be a quick release, quick release setup if you haven't got one of those. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I couldn't live without mine. Um, but so, right, we have air. The mechanism seems to be working fine. So let's pop a bit of paint in it. Let's see how. We get on. 
I'm just going to get a piece of uh, random old cardboard. So, and let's see how we look. So, if we pop the Okay, so I hope you can see that on the uh, so from a distance, it's nice, fine, it's a nice, fine mist. So I'm gonna put a bit more, put a bit more paint on. It covers nice and evenly. That's good. Very little splattering. So, first impression there is that it's really nice. Um, can we do anything a bit finer with it? I do have to say, in terms of the ability to do fine detail work, uh, I think that actually works a lot better than the harder and steam back. Um, Okay, so I am actually, I'm actually really rather impressed with that. Um, so just to see again, put the, really put the, I mean that, that is with the air pressure at about uh, 12 psi. If I turn that down a bit further, see how we get on. I turn the air pressure right down. Oh, that's fantastic. So, I think the uh, I'll turn the compressor off because it's making a noise. I think the uh, I think the consensus there. Yeah, that, that is a that is a genuine first attempt. I've never I've never used the brush before. Um, I'm I'm very happy. I, I think I like that brush a lot. So, I think the uh, I think the the final, the final, um, how can I say? I don't know, but the final, the final opinion for me there. But but definitely, first opinion on using that is I think that's going to become my new uh, go-to, and I think I definitely am going to be a convert to Badger products. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm 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 surprised, if I'm honest, surprised in a good way. So uh, yeah, I'll leave it there for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope that is, has helped in some way. Um, if you've got any questions about it, I'm sure I might have some uh, more experience using the brush over the next few weeks. Uh, hope to hear from you soon.